This is the Mile High Five podcast with Carl Jensen and Doug Cunnington. We have authentic conversations about the journey to Phi, health, happiness, and some very odd tangents. We interview Phi experts, side hustlers, people on their way to Phi, and those who have reached the other side. Join us every week, and if you want the show notes and links and all that other stuff, head over to milehighfi.com. Hey, what's going on? Welcome to the Mile High Five podcast. My name is Doug Cunnington, and Carl is uh, missing again. So we have Carla joining me today for an episode on whether or not we would go back to college. So Carla, how's it going today? It's good. I'm just uh, trying to you know, fill those really big shoes that Carl has left for me, trying to trying to step up to the plate here today. But yeah, I'm really excited to talk about going back to school because I think it's a, a fascinating issue that a lot of people think about. Yeah. And I, I think, I mean, this was your topic. You, you came up with the idea here and I was like, oh, that's perfect. And it's going to be good because we basically disagree. Um, I'm not sure (laughs) about the everything that we're going to talk about, but at least the core pieces of it. So, well, I'm just curious, have you thought about going back to school um, at all? And you're nodding, so go ahead. Yeah, I, um, I think I would definitely consider going back to school for a number of different things. Um, I just, I had a really good experience in college, and I was actually thinking back in preparation for this episode on like going through the course catalog for college and just getting so excited about all the different classes that I could possibly take and just feeling like I was in this sea of knowledge and like fascinating people who wanted to talk about interesting things. And I just, I loved everything about it, the whole, you know, environment, the idea that we were all just there to like learn interesting things. I do think part of my, my rose colored glasses, when I think back to my college days, I had a really fun major. So I I majored in English, which is generally not considered like a super successful career path, Mm -hmm. right? Pretty much the only thing you can do with an English degree is either teach or like go on and get an advanced degree and teach at a higher level. Like that's, those are pretty much your realistic options. Maybe you could be like a book editor, Um, but it's generally not like, you know, software engineering or something that's like, oh yeah, you're going to be fine in life. Like an English degree is like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm a little worried about you, but it was so much fun. And I had planned from the get-go to go to law school. So I was like, no, it's okay. I'm going to be fine. And I was, it worked out great. But for those years I was in college, I was just taking like the most fun, interesting classes. Like I took the history of the English language. Um, I I actually never got to take this class, but I always wanted to. They had a class called The Literature of the Sea, which is like (laughs) Ernest Hemingway books and, you know, books like Moby Dick, books that were all about the ocean. I mean, there were just so many fascinating classes. I took a class on like Victorian poetry. I took Shakespeare classes. It was just all like really, really fun stuff for me. So, yeah, I would go back in a heartbeat for, like, a ton of different things. I would go back and study music. We talked about this in the last episode. I'm a huge piano fan. I would go back and, like, get deep into music theory. That would be really fun. Um, I don't know. Maybe, like, a like psychology would be fascinating. History, more English, more literature. Like, I could just go to school all day, every day, and love it. <laughs> I mean, the opening is perfect. You were like, I had a fun degree and it was English. (laughs) And as an engineer, like that was my least favorite and I always had an issue with it. So just it's incongruent. That makes no sense to me. So tell me about your college experience. So I know you majored in engineering something. What exactly did you major in? And did you like it? How, How was it for you? So computer engineering and it was, no, I mean, I didn't like college just in, in general. I went to Georgia Tech, which it's one of the schools that has a pretty good like weed out system early on. So they kind of beat you up early. And I want to say the the graduation rate was like considerably low, like freshmen's, freshmen that actually graduate. Uh, the percentage is pretty low compared to other schools where like if you get in, like you're 
probably going to graduate unless there's some weird circumstance. Mm -hmm. And at least that's what they told us. I'm not quite sure. Maybe I just, I mean, I'm a decent student. So I won't, I won't uh, take the heat on that, but it's a school that's pretty tough. And I think it does have that reputation. So it was tough for me. Now, Elizabeth, my wife went to the same school. She aced it like literally like, I don't know if I'm supposed to say it. She never listens to these, so it's probably (laughs) fine, but she sits directly above me. So I'll just, I'll get closer to the mic so Uh she can't hear. Um, she, She literally got a 4-0, like that's unheard of. It's, you know, really rare. You have to be very smart to do it. And I like struggled through basically. Um, I think she graduated early and I took six and a half years. I did work along the way. So oh, that it, makes a big difference. I didn't like fail everything, but <laughs> I like, yeah, took every other semester I was working to pay for school. But generally it was, uh, it was tough. I probably didn't have as good of study habits as I maybe would have now. So maybe it wouldn't be as bad. Funny thing. I, I don't necessarily think it was my study habits, but I don't think I slept enough. I think if I slept more, um, and didn't study as much, then I maybe would have, I mean, I test well, but I think just, you know, your brain is dumber if you don't get enough rest. Oh, I think that's a thousand percent true. I actually, uh, this is going to sound braggy and annoying, but I went to Texas A&M. It's really not like a super, super tough school, but um, I got one B in college. That was my only B, and it was in a calculus class. And I remember I stayed up almost the entire night. I got like an hour maybe of sleep the night before my final exam, and I think I got like a D on that exam. And it was this stupid guy who convinced me that I should stay up all night studying and that it would be great for me. And I remember telling him, no, I really, I, I know I'll do better if I get sleep. And he was wrong and I was right. I did terrible on that test. And yeah, that was my only B in college. It's very disappointing. Yeah, that's tough. So sleep is good stuff. Yeah. And you're an avid sleeper, right? I am such a, I am a, a really good sleeper. It's like my superpower in life. I sleep great almost every single night and yeah almost never wake up or anything it's i'm extremely grateful for that it's it, i mean it's just luck of the draw right like yeah. there's there's things you can do to tweak it help help it get a little better but i think most people are just kind of naturally good sleepers or not so thank you universe for making me a good sleeper it's a good thing I think I forgot to answer part of the question so i talked about my college experience i didn't like it too much so i think people know I don't think I would go back to college. Okay. Although when you were answering and you were like, oh, it was so fun when you got to school, like all these new people, I did think it could be fun to go back as a freshman and like live in the dorms. <laughs> and they're like, who's the old guy? Is he like 55? <laughs> like he's older than my parents. Like yeah. what the fuck is he doing here? And I would go to like freshman orientation stuff and I'm yeah. like, hey, I'm Doug and whatever. I'm interested in this stuff and I just want to be friends. So... Yeah, Yeah. that could be funny. Yeah, I think the social aspect of going back as an adult, like a full-blown grown-ass person, would be very interesting. Because on the one hand, I don't know, like you'd feel a little sheepish about it and weird. On the other hand, maybe you've like lost all your inhibitions and just like don't give a shit anymore. So you just like make friends with the people that you like and don't worry about you know, having that big – like it was such a big thing when you go to college, right? You're worried like, am I going to have any friends? And now as an adult, like we have adult friends and I just, I wouldn't care anymore. So I, I think that would actually be kind of a positive thing about it. You know, if, if you meet somebody who happens to be really cool, great. If not, whatever, you're like, you're there to dig in and learn the material. So. Yeah. And I think it'd be popular because I'd be able to buy alcohol and oh, be like, so oh yeah, Grandpa Doug is going <laughs> to yeah. put in the order, you know? <laughs> okay. So I, pr- I probably wouldn't go back to college unless it was as a true freshman. <laughs> just to have a blast. And we talked a little bit about like what we liked and didn't like about school. And I mean, for me, I, some of the social aspects were good, but I, I actually spent so much time studying and working and stressing that I didn't take advantage of that until probably the last year and a half or two. And at that point, I actually like cut down my course schedule. So I was taking the minimum number of hours and mm-hmm. it was a lot more manageable. It was way more fun. And I think maybe 
that is what other people experience at other schools from the get go. And it took me like, you know, four and a half years to get to that point. Yeah. Did you change your major at all? No. no. Okay. I'm stuck with it. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's admirable. Um, I didn't either, but I was just, like I said, dead set on going to law school and I loved all of my English classes. So yeah. you, you couldn't have talked me into changing for anything. Anything you didn't like? Gosh, I mean, there must be something. I just have such fond memories of it. I met really nice, wonderful people. And it just, college kind of pushed me out of my comfort zone in a lot of ways. So Robert and I met in college. Um, so as at Texas A&M, they have, I don't know, the social scene there is very interesting. They have fraternities and sororities, but they're really kind of looked down on. And the cool thing to do on campus is to be in these like organizations that I don't even know how to describe them. The reality is they're not that different from fraternities and sororities. They're just mostly like social organizations that do some service. Um, but they have like more high status at Texas A&M. So we did a lot of those things. So we were in like a freshman orientation program, um, which is how we met. It's called Fish Camp. Um, and I don't know, they're just those kinds of organizations have like a very specific vibe to them where they push you to be kind of like goofy and silly and especially in the context of that freshman orientation program, they really want you to like be wild and crazy and just create this super fun environment that will make the freshmen get really excited about coming to AM. So we, I mean, everything from like coordinated dances, which is a thing that we did, um, to like, you know, chants and yells and just crazy, crazy stuff that really pushed me out of my comfort zone. It was really fun. So, man, I just, I don't, other than that calculus class, I don't, I don't have very many negative memories about college. It was all pretty solid. How about that? What about you? What, what was the thing you liked the most since you're kind of on the negative team? Right. Yeah. I, it's, it's, I'm normally a positive person, but yeah, like when you flip it around, I'm like the same, just the opposite of, of as you. I'm like, ah, it was just everything kind of was a fucking drag, like for my college experience. <laughs> like I said, I just, maybe I struggled through. And I mean, that said, it makes it sound like I did really poorly. I mean, I graduated with honors and did pretty well, but I think I put a lot of pressure on myself, perhaps. Um, so, I mean, the social aspect is great because, you know, once you get um, out of school and you get to be as old as we are now, like making friends is a little more difficult. Like you have to be kind of in the right stage. Like we don't have kids. So if you meet people with kids, their priorities are different. And I don't want to hang out with kids all the time. Right. So that's fair. Yeah. So there's a lot of a lot of pieces like that. But if you're in college, you're like everyone's pretty much in college, except maybe the the old, uh, you know, 43 year old freshman who showed up. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, I'll be like one of the dorm uh, supervisors. What, what do they call them? RAs. Resident, RA. advi resident advisors. Yeah. OK. Yeah. So I'll be like an RA. They're like, yeah, that's a little old for a freshman. <laughs> But you'd be perfect for the fish camp thing, right? Because you were enthusiastic. You enjoyed it. Like, that's perfect. If I did it, I'd be like, everything's fun now, but just wait until <laughs> <laughs> wait until they get really hard. Like, there's all these weed out classes that he just wants you to fail. Yeah. I don't know. I probably would have had such a different experience if I'd been like, I don't know, pre-med or engineering or something that just wasn't a very good fit for me. But I mean, sure. it's important to to pick a major that is going to mesh well for you. Um, yeah, I will say I did not love law school nearly as much as I loved college. It was a very different experience. And yeah, I think just the kind of person that it attracts was very different than than what I had experienced in college. And it was just like shit got real in law school, you know, like you're about to graduate soon. You got to get a really good job. And it just felt like someone turned the pressure dial up to 11. So, yeah, I I will say I don't love all school across the board. Like there are, there are things that can be a lot more a lot less fun. We actually did an episode on our Pennies and Popcorn podcast about the the TV show Crazy Ex-Girlfriend 
and they have a a song in that show. It's a musical show. It's actually really fun. Um, but there's a song in that show called Don't Be a Lawyer. It's <laughs> wonderful. If anybody hasn't heard that song, you should immediately go to YouTube and Google it because it's pretty great and kind of encapsulates why why one should not be a lawyer because there's a lot of good reasons not to be. So I have like nothing but great stuff to say about college. Law school, not so much. So I guess I'm, I'm kind of in, in the negative camp with you a little bit. Okay. And I think, you know, the way you describe that sounds a lot more like the engineering school that I experienced. And, you know, part of it is the people that are there, right? So uh, Georgia Tech, at least when I went there, it was something like 70% male and nerdy males that can't interact very well. They're not very social. It's just fucking awkward in so many ways. And that's part of the reason why I was like, I need to get out mm -hmm. of this environment because if I'm around these people, I'll become more like them. Yeah. So I, every chance that I got, I was like, I need to be out in the normal. I would even call it like the normal population <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah, 70% dudes is not a normal population. It, that's true. It kind of skews many social interactions. Go ahead. So I think this is a really interesting thing to consider because I'm saying I didn't love my law school experience. You're saying you didn't love your engineering experience. I did not love being a lawyer. You did not love being an engineer, right? Right. Maybe there's a connection between <laughs> these things. Yeah. So yeah, I think if you're miserable in your degree program, maybe a good indication that you are not on the right path. Yeah. And um, the one thing, the one area that I knew was a possibility, but I didn't pursue it as much is um, a dual degree with um, other schools. So a good example in Georgia, so University of Georgia is sort of the liberal arts school, huge school, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone knows University of Georgia. And Georgia Tech is the rival school, but they had a dual degree program where you can get a business degree. Um, I think maybe you would go... Uh, two years at one school and then maybe like three years in the other and you can get, I think you would end up with a master's at the end of it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, your undergrad and the master's, which is, is pretty cool because then you could have a business degree, a mechanical engineering degree and a mechanical master's, right? So very, um, very strong in it's, you know, fewer years, fewer classes. And to my point, maybe you have like a more fun college experience at a more normal school. Yeah. Um, hopefully I'm not, I, I'm not trying to be too negative. I'm a pretty <laughs> positive person, but like, yeah, when I talk about it, I'm like, this is my experience. If you talk to Elizabeth, completely different. She's like, yeah, it was a blast. Yeah. Right? Completely different. So um, as we are hitting a couple other questions here, we're going to talk about whether we would advise people to go to college and we'll have two different scenarios. One for maybe a graduating senior, or we'll just call it a young person who hasn't gone to college yet. And okay. then we'll also talk about um, like a professional who's worked for a few years. So what advice would you give? Let's say you have a niece or nephew and you know, they're say 16 or 17. They're not sure if they're going to go to college. What advice would you give them? I would just make sure that they are being very careful and thoughtful about where they're going, how much they're spending on it, and what the end game is, because I, I feel like this is changing. Certainly when I was a kid, I'm curious if you had the, the same experience since we're about the same age, um, it just wasn't even a discussion. It was just like, you are going to college. That there wasn't even a question. I don't think at my high school, I can't, I can't think of a single person who didn't go. It was just 100% assumed. Now that's because I came from like a pretty privileged background and I did go to a private school. So I want to be clear about that. I understand that I'm coming from like a, a very, very, you know, deep place of privilege there. But it also can be, it, that can kind of backfire on you if you're someone who just ends up going down this path of going to college and you end up with a degree that's not very useful and not very helpful to you, or it lands you in a career that you just completely dislike. So I think you just have to be super cautious. And it's, 
I really sympathize because that is so much to ask of a 17 or 18 year old kid. You know, you're making these decisions when you're so young, you have so little life experience under your belt. I mean, the bottom line is it's just plain tough. I think you have to go into it with your eyes open, knowing that, you know, most people change careers three, four or five times and maybe just be accepting of the fact that like I'm giving this first thing a shot, but it may not work out. So it's a minefield. I don't think there is one golden piece of advice. I just think you have to be really introspective, thoughtful, and make slow, careful decisions about it. What do you think? So I agree with most of what you said. So I won't repeat that part, but I would encourage people to look at two different things. One would be taking at least six months off, maybe up to two years, and just travel and do stuff and get some life experience. And and there's so much that you can do that is much easier to do when you don't have anything else going on. So, you know, we talked um, in a previous episode about your sabbatical, hiking the PCT, and it's probably pretty straightforward to do if you just get out of high school. You can go on a big adventure. You have pretty low expenses, probably pretty low responsibilities. You probably don't have a mortgage or car payments or like a handful of other obligations. So pretty easy to go on a big adventure and then just come right back. As we know, college is super expensive nowadays, and it can lead you down a path like you described where it's like you have this super expensive degree that's not really worth anything, and you could have you could have done different things with that time and money. The other area which Carl and I have talked about before is just like look at skilled trades yeah. and you know, plumbing, uh, electrician, general um, construction and contracting and stuff like that. I mean, it's a great skill to have anyway, if you're th- like, we're sitting in an unfinished basement. And if like, you knew how to, you know, wire electricity and do some light construction, like that's a great skill just to have in general. And then you could be an entrepreneur and like have a huge business with a very small team and, basically have sort of a lifestyle business if you wanted to. So those would be two extra areas. And I mean, I, I didn't do that specifically, but, and, and I don't know what impact it would have. I, I imagine, you know, um, you can still get into school just fine and you may have to review and stuff. I know, you know, coming out of high school, like I could jump right into college and I, you know, remembered all the things I learned from the last year. And I would be able to go right in. But if you took two years off, you're going to be a little rusty. You may have to, you know, refresh for a summer before you start school. But I mean, I don't think it's a huge hurdle. Yeah, I don't think so either. There, I mean, maybe if you're doing like pretty advanced math, you would have to go back and because math kind of builds on itself. Right. But for a lot of things, I don't I don't know if you have to remember your like what you learned in high school biology in order to go back to school if you wanted to be, I don't know, like an audiologist. I think I heard somewhere that they have like the highest career satisfaction of anybody, audiologists. So if you want to go back to school to be an audiologist, do you really need to remember what you learned in like high school chemistry? I'm guessing not. So you could probably go back and and do that at any time. Yeah, I think exactly what you're saying is, is perfect that they're just no one should ever have this idea that there's some kind of like stigma of not going to college or like trying to learn a trade instead or start their own business. I think stuff like that is just fantastic. And I hope as a society we're moving away from that. I don't know, maybe we're kind of insulated in the fire community from mm-hmm. people who would who would look down on that kind of thing. But I just I think it's fantastic and you usually don't have to go into a huge amount of debt to start things like that, right? Which is pretty great when you can start life at zero instead of like negative 150,000. That's a really powerful thing to to do with your life to like give yourself that boost in life. Yeah. So yeah, I would, I think everything you said is perfect. A quick side note um, to the point of like a stigma of not going to college and, and stuff like that. In my school, in my high school, I, I mean, I think a lot of people were going to college, but not everyone. 
So it was definitely not what you described. And I think about myself, I don't think my parents would have necessarily had a major issue if I either didn't go to college at all or decided to take some time off, as long as I had like some plan and wasn't, um, you know, siphoning off (laughs) money um, and just like mooching off of them or something. So I think as long as I had a plan, they'd be okay with it. That said, my dad didn't go to college. He got an associate's degree later, but he was a firefighter. So it didn't necessarily, like he didn't, he just started working when he was like 18, like as soon as he turned 18. Yeah. I mean, think about what that does for your, for your finances. Like, yes, it is true that people with college degrees tend to have higher lifetime earnings, but not that much greater. And if you are weighing that with starting your career for, or, you know, a lot of people taking more than four years, like you were saying, um, that is four years of income potential that you've just completely cut yourself off from. So yeah, yeah, it makes a big difference when you can start working at such a young age. Let's hit the other part, which may be more relevant for some people. And that's maybe you've worked for a few years and we'll just assume someone's in their uh, like late twenties, early thirties. So you have some career, maybe a professional and you've worked for five or six years and you're thinking, Hey, I can go back to school. I can get like an advanced degree. I can get an MBA, uh, maybe add some other piece to the puzzle. So what, what are your thoughts on that? I think it can be great for a lot of folks. Also, a lot of employers will foot the bill, or at least in part, for you to go back and get an advanced degree. So talk to your employer if it's something that you're thinking about, because a lot of them have programs like that where they will cover some of that cost, which can be hugely beneficial because it is so damned expensive. Um, but I do think you have to go into it with your eyes open of exactly how much more income potential you can get if you do get that more advanced degree. Because uh, like I know for Robert, if he were to go back and get a master's degree, I think his company would be like, cool, thanks, but we're like, we're not going to pay you anymore. You you still do what you do. And we don't think it's going to make that big of a difference. So make sure that there's a pot of gold at the end of that (laughs) rainbow before you start chasing after it. Because yeah, I think for a certain subsect of jobs they're they're just going to shrug and say oh that's nice and kind of pat you on the head and then nothing happens to your paycheck so make sure it's financially going to be worth it unless you just are like me and you love school (laughs) and you just like can't wait to go back so um yeah in which case i say go for that that sounds great what do you think yeah so I came from the consulting uh business consulting management consulting background so MBAs were, people loved them, right? Um, And I heard people talk about it and I don't think I ever considered it again because I had such an issue with school. I was like, fuck that. I'm not like, no. (laughs) Especially like you said, you're you're looking at the opportunity cost here. So um, you can go to night school and get your degree um, that way. I know someone who went to, like they stopped working, I think for a year and a half or so. It it was, it was like a top 10, top five business school, but still, you know, they were giving up six figure salary. They were paying who knows how much per year, whatever, I don't know, 30 K something like that. Um, so that's a big, that's a huge amount now. Yeah. I don't know what they make now, but I think it's quite a lot. Um, and I think the payback period makes sense. It's nothing too crazy. That said, when I did start working at, um, the consulting company out of school, I met a lot of people who had MBAs and they were fucking morons. And I was like, (laughs) well, I don't see much value in that. You know, you got the letters after your name, but um, there's different, different schools. Some are high quality. And I would say, you know, specifically for an MBA, something that I'm looking at, which I don't have. So like usual, I'm unqualified to talk about it. (laughs) Um, I would say unless you're going to a top five school or so, it's probably not worth it. Or you may as well just, you know, go to, you know, get a correspondent school and get your MBA. Like, I mean, people put in a lot of time and if that helps you move your career up, like I support you. 
I know some people have done that and it was very important to them. So I don't want to shit on like people that worked really hard to get it. But for me, it made no sense. And I was like, I'm not getting that. And I can clearly see like people can earn MBAs and they're not performing better. They're performing worse. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think ultimately employers just want you to be really good at your job. And if you can actually get better at your job by getting an advanced degree, then that's great. And I say go for it. But a lot of times it's just letters after your name. You know, I we've all had that experience of meeting someone who has like some sort of important sounding title and thinking, really? Like, how did you, <laughs> you just don't seem like the sharpest tool in the shed or, um, yeah, I tend to think that going to school and getting the letters after your name doesn't always necessarily translate to being great at your job. So I wouldn't go back just to get the letters. I would go back to feel like I'm actually getting something valuable out of that. So I think that's a good segue to our last question. Do you think your college degree was worth it looking back now? I think so in a sort of indirect way. I got the degree from Georgia Tech, which is a a pretty good school. It's a good engineering school. And that helped me get a job at Accenture, which is a good consulting company. And eventually I left that company, went somewhere else, but it all started with like a good degree from a good school, even though I never used the engineering portion of it. Like I could have do like processor design or software development. And I did essentially neither one of those things, not not even close to processor design, but technically I took a bunch of classes to do that. So indirectly it did help me um, eventually not have to work for a corporation, but I could have figured out how to do it without the degree. Do you think you could have gotten a job at Accenture without? No. Okay. No, I didn't, no. Yeah, I yeah. assume not, but. I didn't even have a high enough GPA to get a, to get a job there, but I had a referral to oh, get nice. it. nice. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, they want good people there and I, <laughs> and I didn't have the grades. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that kind of stuff is, is so common, right? It's have, having people like a network who can help you is often a lot more valuable than the, the letters after your name or the yeah. 3.9 on a piece of paper. Yeah. How about you? Uh, I mean, financially, clearly it worked out great. Like the amount that I earned right out of law school was phenomenal. And yeah, I mean, it was, it made up for the cost of all my education very, very quickly. I probably like, I mean, probably in a year. So, um, yeah, I will say college and law school used to be a lot cheaper back then. And I did have some scholarships that helped out with that a lot. Um, but yeah, it, uh, it went very fast, and we were able to save a lot very quickly. So financially, for sure, 100%, like, it was clearly on paper worth it. Um, I think in general it was worth it, too. Obviously, I loved my college experience so much I wouldn't trade it for anything. Law school, I'm much more lukewarm about. Um, but I think it helped shape me in, in a lot of important ways, and having that experience of working at these, you know, big law firms. I think I'm really grateful for it because I can always say I did it and I tried it and I know it wasn't for me. Whereas if you never have that experience, I think you are more tempted to, you know, look at these big, shiny, high-rise office buildings with the polished floors and the beautiful wood desks and just this environment that's so flashy and just seems so cool and you know you see it like on television and um like actually was not one of those people who went to law school because I saw tv shows about lawyers I don't think I saw a single tv show about lawyers but you know you see these things in popular culture and I certainly would have seen them as an adult even if I didn't when I was younger so I'm very very grateful that I had that experience of getting to try it and say hey there's a lot of things that are good about this, but it is not a good fit for me. So I'm going to walk away and do something different. So yes, I'm grateful for it. Yes, I think it was worth it. Um, don't think I would do anything differently if I had a magic wand. 
But if I were advising a young person who was just starting out, I would have a lot of caveats and warnings to give them before they <laughs> followed the same path that I did. So, yeah. All right. Well, you have a podcast podcast called Pennies and Popcorn. And any upcoming episodes you're excited about? Um, let's see. Well, we just put one out on Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, oh, which nice. is pretty great. We did the math on what a lifetime supply of chocolate is worth, which is pretty fun, um, and had a lot of Grandpa Joe hate in there. And then um, the one, we put this out a little while ago, but the Crazy Ex-Girlfriend podcast that I was talking about um, is so much fun. That is such a great, campy, hilarious show, and especially the one where they have the Don't Be a Lawyer song. So check that one out for sure. Um, yeah, we're going to have you guys on for an episode soon about Office Space. So we got a oh, yeah. lot of fun things cooking. Awesome. So we'll link up to those couple episodes. And thanks a lot, Carla. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the show. That was the Mile High Five podcast. And I'm Doug Cunnington, the Balder host. And Carl Jensen is the cool, sexy one. If you dig the show, please do three things for us. Number one, tell a friend, a family member, an enemy about the show. We really don't care who you tell. Maybe forward them a specific show that you know that they will like. It's the single most helpful thing that you can do to spread the word. It's like giving us a virtual high five. And uh, actually, we don't give high fives in, in person. So the virtual kind is pretty good. And more importantly, your friend or family member or even your enemy will appreciate the fact that you were thinking of them. Number two, make sure you're following or subscribed on your podcast app. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Overcast, YouTube, whatever you're using, and that way you won't miss a show. And number three, please leave us a rating and review. We read them on the show occasionally, and you might hear yours out there on an upcoming episode. Quick disclaimer, this show is not financial or legal advice. I'd actually be surprised if it sounded like it. It's really just for entertainment, and that's at least what we're hoping for. But seriously, get advice from professionals. Carl and I are just two guys with microphones that sit in my basement and talk. So we'll catch y'all next week.